Okay, it is one o'clock, so I am going to go ahead and get us started today. I want to make sure we have uh, plenty of time for the excellent session we're going to um, have this afternoon with an excellent panel. Um, so I'm going to keep my introductions pretty brief and just kind of try to uh, point out the members of the panel. Um, Crystal Smith is the director of the Center for Instructional Development and Technology at Southeastern Oklahoma State University. Um, and uh, the uh, primary speakers of our panel today will be student workers who work in that CIDT office and have been leading the social media team for uh, the university um, and, and that office. And so sort of leading that group is Max Hamblin. And uh, also with Max and the rest of us today are Kat Waitman. And I think Nico Sanders has made it on. Um, and we've also got a few other people from the CIDT office who may be chiming in as we go along. Alicia Reidenauer, who's the assistant director, um, as well as Sarah Hughes and Don Anderson. So um, we just first want to thank you guys for, uh, pr for presenting with us today and um, thank you to everyone who's here to join us in the audience. If you have any questions, please feel free to add those in the chat and I will be monitoring there. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Max or Crystal, who is whoever is going to start. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm mainly just going to give a quick introduction and then I'm going to let Max take it away. But this um, really we wanted to give a concept and give some context for what uh, we've been working on and why we have a social media team at um, NCIDT at Southeastern. So what you see on the screen right now is a logo that we use for our social media for Southeastern Extended. And the theme of this session is building community through social media. So several years ago around, I think it was about 2018, um, maybe starting a little in 2017, we started doing a lot with social media and we started doing things like Facebook Live for career fairs and some other things. And um, we needed a way that we could share to multiple groups at one time. And so the way to do that would be to have a page that could share to groups. And so we started thinking about a concept for what that page exactly would be. And we see our role as trying to connect the online students with the on-ground community. We don't want to have Southeastern online and Southeastern face-to-face. -face. We just want to have Southeastern and everybody's part of that. About the same time I had been working on my PhD in several courses and it occurred to me that, you know, when we're trying to build these learning communities and classes where I experienced a lot of community was not through the discussion boards. I mean, yeah, that's a good thing. It has its place. But where I got more of that sense of learning community was from the people around me. I would talk about the things I was learning to my family to my friends, to coworkers who uh, came through the door and asked me how things were going. And I would talk about the topics that we were learning. So basically all of those people became part of my uh, educational experience by, and part of my university by extension through me. And so that was the concept that we wanted to go for is that this Facebook page is for Southeastern and yes, it's for faculty, staff, and students, but it's beyond that too. It's also for coworkers, friends, family, community, all those people that help support the faculty, staff, and students. They're all part of that family tree, the extended family. And so, um, so we have the concept, we have the page, we have um, some other platforms as well that use the same that are all called Southeastern Extended. But from there, we handed it off to student workers and said, do something with this. And so we have CIDT is organized in teams. We have a graphic design team, a video team, an accessibility team. One of our teams is social media. The reason we have teams is because they help do tech support, but we're not swamped with tech support tickets. They don't have a constant stream of requests. And so between those requests, they're doing a project. And so this team, when they're not busy doing tech support, they're busy doing something for social media. 
and to keep our page active and be effective at communi communicating with everyone uh, that we need to, we do fun things in between. So we might send out informational things, but we also do some fun stuff. And so uh, really the team leader gets to decide how that's going to look. They get to decide what the weekly layout is going to be, um, what uh, topics or with, whether it is spotlights, whether we're doing video, written things. Um, it's very much led by the team leader and that team leader then delegates from there. They have weekly meetings um, and they get a lot of leadership experience, including giving presentations like today. <laughs> so our team leader, Max, is going to lead this presentation from this point and other members of the team can chime in anytime they would like. Awesome sauce. Thank you, Crystalla. Um, so yeah, so my name is Max Hamblin. I'm a senior at Southeastern Oklahoma State University. Um, I've been the social media team leader for almost a year now, um, but I have worked on the social media team since I started working in 2017 with CIDT. Um, I started as a high schooler. I was a concurrent student, and it's been really awesome to watch this program and this kind of, you know, the our social media community grow um, in the four years that I've been working with CIDT. Um, so I will allow us to move on a little bit. So this is everybody on our team. Um, you know me, I'm the social media team leader, but I'll give everybody else a chance to introduce themselves. Um, so we can start with you, Kat. Hello, I'm, I'm Kat. I, I do a lot of the like actual like, well, I don't want to say I do a lot of the graphic design. Max <laughs> does a lot of it too, and they're really good at it. But um, I, I do the tech tips. I do basically whatever Max is just like, hey, we need a thing. Can you can you make a thing like really quickly? i be like, yeah, sure. And then sometimes I don't attach it in the email because <laughs> but I try. It's fine. <laughs> um, I, will, I will pass it on to the next person. I think that's you, Nico. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that yeah, no, can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> Thank you. How you guys doing? My name is Nico Sanders. Um, I'm part of the video editing, graphic design, social media pages here at Southeast. And, I mean, very fun experience. I mean, take care of a lot of the right now current doing projects, like just asking, like, just going around asking questions, interviewing people, just getting a lot of information about Southeast and then just, you know, have a fun with it. Thank you, Nico. Um, so every member of our team is uh, typically assigned weekly projects that are similar in nature. So Kat, um, I asked her to do a lot of tech tips. Um, that's kind of her specialty. She's really with uh, really intuitive with graphic design. So she makes some you know really interesting graphic compositions and stuff to make our page more engaging. Um, Nico recently has been doing um, kind of some street style interviews where he goes out and he'll ask different students questions like, how's your time in Southeastern going? Um, at the beginning of this semester, he actually went out and asked a couple students how they were kind of hoping that the semester would go. Do they feel prepared for the coming semester? That kind of thing. And now we're going to meet back up with them um, after finals week and kind of ask them, well, how did it go? You know, is it as you were expecting? That kind of thing. So. Uh, uh, Zephan's not here with us, but Zephan Patton is a, a concurrent student that works with us. He does a lot of tutorial videos, kind of showing people how to maybe change the Chrome theme or how to use InSpace, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but he's also been an incredible asset to our team, and he does a lot of um, graphics for us as well. Okay, so Southeastern Extended is a multi-platform project. We use um, six different social medias uh, pretty frequently. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are going to be our main ones. Those are the ones that we're using daily. Um, we have daily posts that go out on there. Um, but we're also starting to branch out to TikTok with those uh, street style interviews. And we have videos on YouTube that we link to our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and we use materials from LinkedIn Learning as well. So we're very multifaceted and we try to connect with the community in as many ways as possible. Um, we want to you know, get our feelers out and make sure that we're engaging different types of audiences. Um, so we tailor our uh, we tailor the wording, you know, for Twitter, we have to shorten it. So it's a little bit more like hip, I guess you could say. Um, we're Facebook, that's where we include a lot of our longer um, paragraph or essay style interviews. Um, Instagram is mostly pictures, but we do utilize Instagram stories to host quizzes and polls for students just to kind of, uh, you know, 
see what they're up to, get some information about Southeastern um, and get information about Southeastern out to them. So um, yeah, move on a little bit. Um, that kind of leads me to the types of posts that we typically post on our social media. Um, this little graph down here, the one, two, three, four, five, kind of shows you um, how much we post of each thing. So on the one side, we post a lot of infographics um, with tutorials about like how to change um, or how to access colleague, how to get advised, stuff that students that don't have those constant reminders from faculty or advisors on campus might not be getting. Um, so we, you know, we really try to push that out to the online community. Those infographics are also things like um, student discounts that are offered in our area, um, but also online. So students that aren't in the Durant area still have some discounts that they get as a student. Um, tutorial videos, we get a lot of those from Zephan. Um, recently, he uh, made a tutorial video about how to use InSpace, which is a program that we're using to host some engagement activities through social media. Um, our engagement posts are specifically designed for students to comment and respond to questions that we ask. So those can be things like Facebook stories, Instagram stories, but they're also sometimes graphics like, hey, it's spring break, tell me what you guys are doing. And we have people comment stories in the, the comments. Um, we had one engagement post that was, tell us about like a crazy experience you had with a roommate. Um, and those were some interesting stories with people who had some maybe not the best roommates and they had to, you know, go through that, but it was, it was fun to kind of see what everybody's experience was and um, have a way for them to have that conversation, even though they're not face to face. Um, along with those engagement posts and trying to get that face to face connection, we also do spotlights. So we do faculty, staff and student spotlights where it's either a video um, or it's a, a word for word interview that we have with them. And it asks staff questions about, you know, how long have you been at Southeastern? What do you do here? Um, you know, what's your background in? And maybe what's your experience been at Southeastern? Um, one of the main questions that we ask all of the people that we interview is what advice do you have for other students? Because, you know, we, ha we have such a large demographic that attends Southeastern that we're all getting these different pieces of information. And, you know, I might attend this one class and learn one thing and Kat might go to another class and learn another, but we come together in that community and we share things and that's how we grow as a, as a university. Um, so those are our spotlights. And then we also do Facebook live interviews. Um, I've been doing those since 2017. And um, that's where we interview faculty and staff live on Facebook and students, faculty and staff are able to comment um, well in family. Um, Cause once again, Southeastern Extended isn't just for uh, university people like who are enrolled or employed there. Um, I use that because that's typically the demographics that we work with, but that's not the only people that are actually following or participating in Southeastern Extended. So just to clarify, but um, for Facebook Live, uh, people that are watching the live stream are able to comment questions and kind of um, talk to the person as if they were there themselves. So we've interviewed uh, Dr. Charla Hall, um, who's retiring soon. We've interviewed um, Ray Baum Gardner. Um, we've interviewed, oh gosh, I can't remember his name, but he comes from Massachusetts. Um, I think that might be Baumgartner actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've interviewed a lot of people um, and we typically interview um, you know, faculty that might be doing something special that month. So it's like a, a way to kind of spread the word about their events as well. Um, so with that engagement, those spotlights that we do and things like that, um, we were starting to see a bit of a decline in the statistics that we had for our interactions with students and people on our social media pages. So we sent out an engagement survey that asked, you know, on average, how often do you interact with, um, you know, our pages? Um, where did you uh, hear about us first? You know, where did you discover us? Um, and these are kind of some of the main results that we got from that survey. We had a good bit of participation um, and it really did give us some insight into what the community was expecting from us and what they were missing. Um, so since then we have seen a huge increase uh, because we were able to tailor our content to better fit the population that we're um, you know, putting it out for. So um, some of those results is that they found that 40% of our followers discovered Southeastern Extended through gold. Gold is our online orientation that we have uh, before students are able to access their classes. They have to go through this orientation. Um, so that was pretty interesting to know that a lot of the students that are coming in are learning about this community through an orientation. So that means that we're going to be getting freshmen, we're going to be getting new grad students, things like that, um, because that's the, or the first thing you do when you get to Southeastern is take that orientation. So we know that a lot of newcomers are 
finding their way to Southeastern Extended through gold. Um, we also asked the question, you know, how engaging is our content? And we found that 36% of our followers found our content, content to be moderately engaging, um, which sounds kind of like, okay, it's moderately engaging, but um, compared to um, how students felt connected to their community, that's actually this uh, light blue bar, which is a little confusing because it was light blue on the last graph. Um, but although students say that they feel moderately engaged with our content, they do feel that they are highly connected to Southeastern Extended's community. So even though our content may not be as exciting or as, um, you know, uh, something that they want to keep following and things like that, it is still uh, a way that is connecting them to the community and they still feel like they are getting that interaction that they're looking for. Um, we also found that 44% of our followers interact sometimes, which means at least once a week um, throughout the month. So yeah, so we do have a good bit of participation. Um, so yeah, those are some of our engagement surveys results. And from there, we were able to come up with some ideas that might be more interactive, more um, you know, uh, personal for the people that are on our page which is where we got into our experiments. Um, so this project, uh, we started hosting video game nights. Crystal, you look like you were gonna say something. Do you wanna jump in? Okay. I'm just, I'm just here. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so one of the ways that we wanted to try to engage our community a bit more was to host um, something where they could physically talk to each other, where they could physically talk to us and get to know people in their community and in the university. So we started hosting these game nights every Friday at 9 p.m. through InSpace, which is what Zephan made that tutorial video about, once again, trying to make it more accessible for students and people that are joining. Um, and these Jackbox game nights, it's kind of like a word game. Um, it's very quick, it's very easy. We can get through, I guess, like two or three rounds through an hour. Um, but it's just a way for people who you may not interact with normally you can get together and you can get to meet new people. Um, Crystalla has invited some of her family members to it. Um, we have Zephan, who is not here, but he is my co-host. We host these nights together. Um, he usually brings some of his family and friends. I always invite the entire honors program to the event. Um, so we usually have a good number of people that come. Um, we're still working on increasing the amount of people that show up to these events. Um, oh, it does look like we have a question in the chat. Um, yes, I was trying to draw your attention to that. Oh, thank you, Kat. Um, how much do you press on? She was, um, so TikTok is new, and I mentioned that in the chat. So we don't have a whole lot of, we can't really answer very many questions about that. But um, uh, Max, really quick, can you mention Hootsuite? Because I do think that that's an important management piece of what you do. Absolutely. Um, so I'll back up a little bit. When we're putting out those posts, because we have so many like uh, social media platforms, it's difficult to keep track of all of them. So we utilize Hootsuite, which is a website that allows us to post all at once. So we have different streams. So we have like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we can schedule posts to go out for each of those uh, social media pages. And it all goes out at once. You can schedule it um, you know, months ahead of time. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier for us. We can develop content uh, a couple weeks in advance. And that's typically what we'll do. We'll make content for the next week, even though you know we've already got content for last week, that kind of thing. Um, so when it comes to, uh, you know, do we use content that we have on Instagram, on Facebook? Yes. The answer is yes. Because of that Hootsuite capability that we have. Um, does that answer your question? Allie? Yeah. Um, thank you. Yes, it does. Um, it answers it about the cross platform and I'm so glad to hear about Hootsuite. Um, so what is the longevity? Like when you're making these, are you thinking we're going to use this for this one three month campaign or do you design them thinking we're going to remix this stuff in the future? It doesn't have to be TikTok, but just in general, are you leaving? Yeah. yeah, that's kind of one of the things I'm wondering is, are you leaving? You're going to leave and graduate, right? So will the people that follow you use these? Absolutely. Um, so uh, we'll talk about professional development a little bit more at the end where every student worker is building a portfolio of their work um, that is a lot like we can access that um, as part of the you know Southeastern Extended Graphic Design team. Um, 
but yeah, we reuse posts all the time. Um, I will repost Facebook lives that I did, you know, back in 2018, 2019. Um, we have some content from COVID about, you know, mask wearing, hand washing, things like that, that uh, at the beginning of the semester, when we had a bit of a flare up, we posted some of that out. Um, so yeah, we reuse content all the time. Um, we, it's, it's pretty relevant um, in future years because of the nature of the university. We have that constant cycle of students. Um, Tutor.com has been a, oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, sorry. So they, they use a shared um, Canva account also. So all of their content is, content is in there where they can find it really quick to, to put. Um, the content that is especially shared a lot are things like the tech tips or we have posts about maintenance Friday. Um, so things that are reoccurring frequently. However, each it, when Max graduates, we'll have a new social media team leader and that team leader can remake those or they can come up with their own style or format or things too. Um, we, we want them to be efficient in reusing things, but we also want all of them to be building an extensive portfolio. So we don't highly encourage them to reuse things often, but we want them to be able to reuse them when it's relevant. We... We ha sort of have a structure in place, like we have like a document that has all of our like color themes and the logos that we use to like sort of like keep a consistent brand. But it's more about that we have like a consistent infrastructure for like how to make everything look cohesive than reusing past assets. That way it stays like fresh, but also it stays like there's like a through line to where everything looks like it matches to the same social media account. But future students can like look at that like because essentially like doing stuff like this is choosing which rules you want to follow when to achieve what goal you want to do and so they future students who take up these the mantle we're doing will definitely be able to look at like what color schemes we use what like past templates we've used like what vibes we've put in our posts and like they can choose whether to follow that or not but that infrastructure is there that way they can build off of it and make something completely new but still has the like the vibes of what came before thank you kat the vibes are very important when it comes to color matching our our posts to be branded and stuff like that um, but yeah, we, we do expect that um, we'll have access to those posts in the future for future social media team leaders. Um, and we all kind of work together. Usually the social media team leader um, was somebody who was already on the team. And so they have experience with the other people that are on the team, um, with what their working styles are like, what their graphic styles are like. Um, and so it's pretty um, intuitive when we make that change and stuff like that. Um, one quick thing that I wanted to say before we move on to newsletters about our Jackbox game night is that um, part of this Next, I just is... realized that Zephan is here. So Oh, Zephan, yay. <laughs> um, well, Zephan, if you have anything that you want to share about the Jackbox game nights, um, I was just going to mention really quick our Harry Potter trivia night that we're having this evening. Um, so once a month we're planning, we plan to host a like larger event where we do, um, you know, more advertising and it's a bigger um, there's more people involved. Um, that way we can kind of uh, make sure that people can take time off to, to join this event, that kind of thing. We have one every Friday, but then we also have a bigger event once a month um, just to make sure we're reaching as many people as we can. Um, this month, we're doing a Harry Potter trivia night and we're partnering with the advising team. Um, Jimmy Maple is one of our team captains this evening. Um, and by doing that, we're ensuring that the students that come to participate, uh, the family members that come to participate are actually getting to meet some of the people that their students would be communicating with through email or in person. Um, it's kind of like a meet and greet, um, you know, meet the teacher night kind of thing. Um, but we're doing it in a fun way that you get to kind of know them as a person versus as this entity that you ask questions to when you need help. So that's just what I wanted to say about the Harry Potter trivia night. Zephan, do you have anything else to add about our game nights? Yeah, I'll just say, um, especially with the Harry Potter trivia, it's very nice that we're able to sort of simulate the on-campus experience, especially for a small campus such as Southeastern, where you really get to know a lot of faculty's names and have good conversations with them. Um, that's something that's very important to us. Absolutely. And we do get to simulate that through the, the online gaming experience that we have. 
Um, another way that we try to um, push that information out to students um, and to family members and faculty is we have a newsletter, a Southeastern Extended newsletter that we put out every month. We typically try to put it out the third Thursday of the month, but it doesn't always happen. Um, but what that uh, contains, it contains tech tips, department spotlights, talking about specific parts of um, departments that students might need to know about, like the Career Management Center having interview counseling. Um, we have a letter to the editor section. We just started that. Zephan is our um, editor that we have. And um, students can submit questions that they have about student life or about classes, and Zephan will respond to them in the next newsletter. We also include information about upcoming events. Um, and we also do some of our faculty interviews, our student interviews, um, and just some other important or cool information that's going on on campus um, that we can push out to some of those online students that might not know about it. Um, do you guys wanna share a little bit about what your experience working on the newsletters has been like? Um, for me personally, cause I, I write the, the tech tips is that my experience has basically been me asking what what help could I help like freshmen who read this because there's there's a billion different little like tips and tricks that you pick up when you go through college that help you like write your essays faster like one of the tech tips I came up with I think in a past month was a uh, speech to text that way you can just kind of like speak and not worry about like the inhibitions of like typing and writer's block and like getting it all out there and then editing and that that's something I had to discover on my own when I was like so if like through the tech tips I've been able to like put in there things that I could potentially like help other students be more effective at doing their schoolwork just help them like like I think next month's spoilers is going to be about um discounts students can get and like because like they can get like discounts on HP laptops. And that's very important when you're a student because like students are by and large, not super um, rich in the having money department normally. So <laughs> <laughs> any anything that can help them like survive a little bit easier. Like if when we publish the, the, um, the student discounts that could potentially help, like that could be the difference between a student having to like eat ramen or, you know, a meal with nutritional value that month. And so that's, that's sort of been my experience. It's, you know, and then there's the whole like people coming in, um, Dawn typically edits the, the tech tips that she's done in the past. And, you know, it's, it's both like, it's sort of like a team effort. Like you write it and then people come in and like, um, like on the tech tip that's coming up, Max, like Max had suggestions for like, which, like, which ones to exclude, which ones were like not as important. And it's both an experience in like helping your fellow students and also working with a team to like make the best product possible. That is it. Jenny, Jenny also helps with that with her team. Jenny, do you want to mention anything? I would say um, I think that uh, it is a first of all, I think it's a really excellent service for students, especially those who are not on campus. My unit is online and distance advising, so pretty specifically online undergraduate students and students who attend at one of our outreach locations. So they are not always as you know well informed of things that you know, everything that's happening on the main campus or opportunities or especially things like online student discounts and things like that. Um, and so I think it has, I think it's a really excellent service that our CIDT office provides to those students to help them feel connected. And I think it has been a really good experience for the advisors in my unit to sort of be a part of that, to be able to provide feedback to the team about the, um, 
subject matter and the topics um, and to kind of um, hopefully or we have been trying to help encourage and send it out to our students as well and share it with them and encourage them to read it, submit letters to the editor and other feedback. Um, and so we're, we're hoping that that also helps create more readership as well. So um, I think it's been, a, but we have enjoyed it a lot on our side and I hope it is, has been a, um, a equally beneficial experience having us uh, provide input. <laughs> And I think it's been really good for the student workers in CIDT. So they have a weekly meeting where they um, review what all needs to happen that week and what all is going on. But some of those meetings, we invite other people to participate, such as Jenny's team. The online advisors will come and they will give suggestions of things that they would like to get out in another format to their students. Um, or uh, just make any suggestions about the things that we're working on. So that's been another opportunity for our student workers to work with other people on campus to serve our online population. I think um, everything that you guys have shared, it kind of just goes to show why it's so important that student workers are part of this process. Um, because we're the, that first hand, that first line, you know, kind of defense of we know what's going on, we're, we're up to date on everything. Um, and we can share like personal experiences that we have. Like Kat was saying, that's, uh, you know, those are the tech tips that helped her through school. It is going to help somebody else through school now that she's moving on. So it's been really awesome working on this team. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was professional development. And Crystal, you'll have to take this away from me because you know way more about it than I do. Um, but basically this last semester, we've been really trying to ensure that, well, the entire time that we've had student workers at CIDT, we've been trying to ensure that the students come in, um, you know, maybe from high school, maybe they're, it's their first year at college, and they gain experiences that they can use um, after they graduate. So that's going to be video editing skills, it's going to be social media development and things like that. Um, and it gives us kind of the stepping stones that we need to reach our goals. A lot of us are um, people that are considering communication degrees, people that are considering advertising degrees. Um, I'm an art major, so you know, creating graphics and things like that is really fun for me. Um, so these are skills that we're learning right now that are definitely going to help us whenever we graduate. Um, and Crystal, you can talk more about that. So in CIDT, we're um, piloting a career management focused um, student worker program where basically we work with the Career Management Center and we have them develop resumes and portfolios throughout the time that we're here. And we have um, employee evaluations once a semester where we talk to them about goals to work on. Um, and then for some of those, the goals have to do with sharing things, doing presentations like this, which was one of Max's goals um, for this semester. And so um, we've had a lot of opportunities, including for the students who didn't set that goal, but they get dragged along too. <laughs> Um, Max has actually got to do a presentation in New Orleans uh, for the SWACRA conference for business showing um, a VR uh, module that we did. She also did a presentation at an honors conference in Kansas, um, again about VR. So the VR project really sparked a lot of opportunities for them to do presentations, both virtual and in person. And so we've kind of tried to run with that even more, which is part of why we wanted to sign up for this conference for them to give another opportunity to share some of what they're doing even outside of that VR project um, because they have absolutely thrived. We've done several show and tells where we've gone to other universities too, again with the VR project, and they've got to present and show the things in the headsets and on the computers and talk about what they've done. We've had, um, we've done that both on other campuses um, as well as having people from our campus or from other campuses come here to CIDT. So um, that's really our goal is to help them be as marketable as possible when they leave here. So they have a lot to show for themselves um, in a whole lot of different categories. So thank you, Priscilla. Um, that's actually all I have as far as my part of the presentation goes. Um, do you guys have any questions for us? One piece, I, just from the chat, uh, 
Ona had uh, mentioned that their IT department, I'm not, I'm not sure which institution, would not allow them to use TikTok. And uh, Kat kind of provided some other uh, suggestions of things that might be good. Uh, thank you, Ona. Uh, Connor State, they will not allow them to use TikTok. I was just curious, uh, Crystal or anybody else who might know, were there any concerns like that from our IT department about TikTok? We literally in this week's meeting added TikTok. Oh, so okay. I'm uh, I'm going the route of if someone slaps our hand, we'll stop. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't go very far into that one. <laughs> okay, I was just curious. I didn't know um, if that had been something that was a discussion or not. So maybe. <laughs> I, I think yes, it's I, kind of funny. I, I'm and I I'm a very much ask forgiveness, but not permission kind of person. <laughs> Um, I was just going to say, I think it's kind of funny. I, I added that as like a, it, 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 graphically, it makes it three. So it's even on the page. And I was like, that's what we've talked about. I'll throw that one in. And you guys are asking too many questions about TikTok. <laughs> it's the hot new commodity. <laughs> Alicia says I need that on a t-shirt because it's so true. <laughs> I I don't have a uh, question, just a, a comment or a compliment. I really like the the student focus, like you're doing this um, for outreach, like just to, for publicity and, and engagement, but that you're also, the, there's a heavy focus on, you want your students who are doing this to get skills out of this that they can take to the career field after they graduate. I think that's a, a great way of approaching this type of project. We're very proud of them. As you should be. <laughs> and Ona, as far as um, originating, we really don't connect what we're doing to marketing. There is other social media for Southeastern. Um, there's the Southeastern marketing social media, and then there's what we do in CIDT. And the main difference between the two is that Marketing is reaching out to external, it's recruitment, it's the more professional side. What we do is very low stakes, and that's why we can have the student workers just experiment and try new things. Um, basically, ours is for an existing community to build that community. So it's for the people that are already here just to get information out. Um, and so that makes it a little bit easier because it's a little less formally connected to other things. Um, and the types of things we share are things like announcements for Maintenance Friday and those tech tips and just general things. We need one more way to get out, but people get mad if we send too many emails. <laughs> um, and that's the underlying foundation for it. But then we can really just play and use it as a resource to build up. Um, so that's that results in a lot less universe, university oversight than if it was the marketing side of social media. That's um, a good distinction to make. Uh, Kat, were you going to address the question? I was, okay. was going to address <laughs> Melissa. Because um, Melissa is asking, what uh, do you decide, what social media do you decide to stick with and what to retire? Like, is Snapchat even a thing anymore? Um, so what we... <sighs> We're, we're not just necessarily for students, we're for like the entire Southeastern community, if we're for the professors, the adjuncts, the like staff, it's, it's kind of the community of college. And so when we go about like what social medias we're using, it's what will engage with the largest community of like Southeastern like people. So we could do Snapchat, something just in my soul tells me not a whole lot of the professors on campus are using Snapchat in their daily lives, but they are using things like Facebook and like Instagram. And like, so what we, why we use like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, besides from them being the big three social medias that are sort of where the biggest collection of people that we can reach is, is that it's sort of a good, like, it's a good tier list of like the generations that way we can essentially reach all like the people that like use those social medias because there's a lot of like cross between them. So that the, the decision, oh, no, go ahead. the decision kind of like, cause we, a, you want to keep your socials to like 
three or four, you don't you don't want to go on every social media possible because it starts to get diluted and disingenuous. And then you kind of just come across as like an algorithm bot in social media terms. But also it just it just has a nice through line between them. What were you gonna say, Kisla? Sorry. We also base it some on what the people who are on the team use. <laughs> because for example, when we first started, we did make an Instagram, but there, we weren't really, I mean, Alicia and I didn't get on Twitter very much. And so for a little while, we didn't touch Twitter a whole lot. And then Kat came and said, why don't we do Twitter? And we said, do you do Twitter? Well, then it's yours. That's your job. <laughs> and so especially at the beginning, before we used Hootsuite, it was, well, we have to have somebody to that, you know, is proficient in that. Um, with Hootsuite, it makes it easy to manage certain ones. So that also plays a role in what we're using, um, the management of it. But if a student worker comes in with something and that's a social media platform or just an idea, we do a lot of experimenting in, in a CIDT. There's been lots of apps or programs and ideas just for various things that student workers have brought up. And in general, we always say, let's try it. Some of them don't last very long and some of them stick. <laughs> You may, uh, forgive me if you already answered this, but is the Hootsuite, is that free or do you have to pay for that? It's free? Yeah, that's free. I awesome. think you can- yeah, For the most part, free. free. It's free but, up to three socials and then- Oh, okay. Further, you have to pay for more, but yeah. Any other questions? Oh, let's see. Oh, Musa, they, uh, they cover most modern social medias. Like they cover Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, I believe they cover Snapchat, not entirely. I believe I've seen them on there, but basically like any of like the big, like Fortune 500 owned social medias they they have in their purview. But for the free version, you have to select just, I think you said three, and then yeah. you can also only schedule out so far. So when they're creating their posts, they keep those organized in files and they can only schedule out so many at a time because that's one of the limitations of the free version of Hootsuite. However, you can save it as a draft. Um, that way you can plan out for months and then as your post posts, you can just go ahead and click schedule and it'll post it. So you can have as, you know, a couple weeks worth of posts on there, but you can only schedule to actual post like automatically um, five at a time. So Simon had asked if there, if we could share maybe a link to one of your more successful social media um, posts that maybe could be shared as an example. I think that's a great idea. You can all follow Southeastern Extended. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was going to do. I'm actually just going to post the like our Facebook link <laughs> in the chat um, and you guys have to follow us to find out. <laughs> <laughs> They and have then, a lot of fun watching the metrics from week to week. There are certain campaigns, especially a few weeks ago, they did one for um, women. It was about women in Southeastern. What was, was it a monthly theme or, but anyway, those got a lot of engagement. Um, so they, they're really good about taking screenshots of their most impressive analytics. <laughs> And that, and you know, if, I'll just kind of say an additional plug for following the pages. Not only will you get to see some of the more um, successful posts, but you'll also get to keep up with all the new and great things that they do in the future. Actually, I don't think that's extended. I think that's just Facebook. <laughs> oh, it, I think it there is. we go. Second <laughs> one. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Second link. <laughs> I mean, the first link if you if you needed to go to Facebook, but <laughs> um, I know um, some posts that did really well in the past when I was a student worker were those Facebook lives where students get to kind of ask questions of their professors. So that type of thing is more manageable, I think, for a lot of universities or colleges where you want to build that engagement with people that um, your students, faculty, staff. Um, get to meet or maybe don't get to see that often even. Um, just a quick note, if you do go to our Facebook page, you are going to see like a ridiculous amount of advertisements for our Harry Potter trivia night, um, as well as uh, just our video game nights in general. 
that's a project we're really working on this month and really trying, we've, we started it last month. Um, so we've had about a month and a half to work through it. Um, but we have been really trying to push that. So just scroll a little bit further and you'll see some of our other content. I went to the page and it's not loading. I think you guys broke it. It's because everyone is trying to get on at the same time because <laughs> we have a great group here. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook wasn't prepared for that. Facebook was not ready. Uh, oh, so Brett loves Harry Potter. So if you would like to uh, add the link for that, maybe Max, we might have a new person join us. <laughs> well, Brett, you can be on my team then because I'm I do not know <laughs> Harry Potter or Potter trivia. <laughs> And those we use in space. So uh, some of the some of you here were in our uh, information fair when we split up into rooms. So it will be with breakout rooms that you can go and join. But they'll uh, so they'll have the teams competing against each other. <laughs> um, and the sign up link is in the chat. So you just type in your information so I can send you the the link to join. And we have lots of rooms. So if everyone wants to play, <laughs> jump in. <laughs> Awesome. Any other questions for our panelists? We've had some good questions and some good discussion already. And as far as that win, it's tonight. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> tonight at nine. <laughs> and this is also a good way, I mean, for people, aren't the recruiters the ones that are the advisors today? Okay, the advisors. I mean, this is a good way for new students to be involved too. Um, to get to know their advisors on another level. So, I mean, sometimes it's parents, sometimes it's girlfriends of students, sometimes, I mean, it, it runs the gamut. I, I'm going to be a warm body there, that's it. So, but my son's a student here, his girlfriend is a student at OU, she's going to be there. So, you know, it's different people all the time. She is part of the Southeastern family by extension through him. That's our yes. concept. <laughs> nice comment, Brett. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, do you let people join in with Zoom uh, for the game nights, Melissa? Is that what you mean? Um, it would yes. be through in space. I don't, I, I, I'm guess you really kind of have to go through in space like it doesn't work with zoom right yeah you like know, we could it, stream it, out like we could screen record and go to zoom which is what we did for the one meeting when we needed an overflow uh, but to be interacting you would need to be in in space and for a game that's definitely interactive <laughs> but that um, is some, is that kind of like zoom where you don't necessarily have to have an account to join or you create right. an account I guess yeah okay yeah, now it's easiest. So it will ask you to make an account, but it's a free account if you try to join in through email or something. But you can join through a Google account, and that's the easiest. Just join with any existing Google account that you have, and it'll get you right in. Good to know. All right. Any other questions? We have about three more minutes, so we could probably take another question or two, depending. <laughs> Okay. Um, so Melissa added, you know, she was just thinking about using other gaming uh, situations or uh, options like maybe Twitch. Um, I'm not familiar with Discord, but I would presume maybe sort of similar to Twitch. So InSpace right now is part of just an experiment. We just have a free account. We've requested it. Um, the executive committee hasn't officially approved it, but they do have nice pricing now at the state level through OneNet. Um, so we're hoping to get it, but it's not an official thing. So it's another thing we're experimenting with, but it has been a really fun platform to use for this purpose. Um, but, you know, if we don't get in space, then yeah, we'll definitely look at other alternatives. We were just looking at ways to engage in a live scenario. And part of that experiment, uh, Friday nights, has been a conflict for a lot so it's been hard to get people in there part of why we picked Friday nights was because Max is the night support on Fridays <laughs> she's leading it so that was our natural choice we might try it other days of the week later or other times but but again lots of experimenting lots of polls to come <laughs> 
Well, and I think Simon had made the comment earlier about the, you know, let's try it attitude. And I think that's just an example of it. You try it, you see if it works and you make adjustments if you need to. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Well, one last call for questions. All right. Well, anything from any of the panelists today before I thank Thank you guys for coming. I will just say, I think this was a really excellent, uh, you, it's as many of the comments in the chat uh, say, and I hope the, the, the panelists are looking at those. Um, it is just really exciting to see the excellent work that the CIDT office is doing, but especially utilizing and giving students opportunities. It's just amazing. So it's one of the best stories on our campus, I think. So. Jenny. I mean it. So, well, I am honored to uh, be here with you guys, honored to work with you guys even. And um, so, uh, and I will just, one final thing I will say is if you do have, uh, think of questions later, anything like that, you would be more than welcome to reach out to uh, anybody in the CIDT office or myself, and we would be happy to uh, answer those questions. I won't be answering. I will put be putting you in touch with the people who know the answers, but I am happy to do that. <laughs> so, okay, well, we are right at 150. So thank you, everyone. Thank you again to our amazing panelists for sharing all of your awesome work. And we will see you guys. I think we have another session. So hopefully we'll see you there. Bye, Bye everyone.